Hello there, I'm Black Bright and today I decided to do a video. This one is on inspiration really. I just had a thought about what does racism feel like? Um, now people ask the question, you know, how come a black person can say nigger and a white person, they get all up in arms about it. Well, you see, when a black person says nigger, it's like a brotherly affection to it. But when a white person says nigger, it has a whole different connotation. It conjures up um, memories of slavery and the derogatory and it's offensive. So people don't quite understand why, depending on who says it, the reaction is different. That's the first thing. Um, and I was trying to think about what does racism feel like to me? And the only thing I can compare it to is when I'm driving in my car and I see a police officer either come behind, beside or is in front of me, I automatically think, are they good cops or are they bad cops? If they're good cops, they're just going to, you know, go where they're going. If they're bad cops, they're going to look for an excuse, especially if I've got my old man in the car it's even worse. Sometimes I think, oh, you know, what will they be stopping us for if they stop us? And the funny thing is, is that why that brings about racism is because if it's a bad cop, it doesn't matter if you've done something wrong or not. You have this sense of um, agitation inside. And racism comes from fear. And those who are racist actually fear um, black people, which is why they're racist, and the black people who are affected by racism is because they're not sure how that person is going to react to their fearfulness. And so and they've got no control of it, over it. As black people, we have no control over racism. We have no control over the way people think, the way people behave and how they're going to behave in a different situation. Sometimes I think to myself, you know, if you know, like you have mixed relationships and I wonder to myself, you know, God forbid um, the Ku Klux Klan came to all these mixed couples and said, listen, you are either going to um, come with us or we're going to you, you die with all the black people that you've chosen to be with. And I often wonder in that moment, what, what would their choice be? As much as they love their black brothers or their black sisters, what would their choice be in that moment? It's fine when everything's going good and you can moderate the racism in your little areas. That's fine. But if the if um, push comes to shove, what would happen in that moment? And that's what to me racism feels like. It's that sense of being unsure. It's that lack of control over people's behaviour, people's attitudes and people's ignorance and not quite knowing what to do about it. You know, I've had many times when I'm walking next to a lady and I see her pull back and I feel responsible. And I tend to think to myself, I don't want her to feel threatened, so I'm going to step back. I know not everybody does that. Some people say, oh, I'll let them go on. But I'm thinking to myself, little old lady, she might have a heart attack. I don't want her to have a heart attack on my account. So I'll step back and let her walk a few yards where she feels comfortable. But that's what racism feels like. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. It's almost like um, just by your presence, you feel persecuted and it's not a nice feeling and when you think about what's going on in the world today with all these things that are trying to generate um, separation and divide and promote lies and ignorance it doesn't help matters it makes you feel like you know what is it why people behave the way they do and why is their behaviour affecting some of us? I mean, with me, you know, I can tell when someone's racist. They don't even have to say anything to me. They can be talking to me and I know I'm the exception to the rule. Um, but from what they say about other people. But 
you know, if you was to call them a racist, they'd swear blind, no, I'm not a racist, I just think so-and-so, that doesn't mean I'm a racist. And most racists don't like to be called racist, and they don't even know that they're racist. But it's, racism is just prejudice against another group of people. And, you know, and it's like a blanket, you know, you, you, it's like one cat fits all. You don't think to yourself, oh, you know, there's a few good ones in there. No, the whole of them, you judge them all the same. Anyway, what did I write down? I wrote down some reminder points. Um, oh, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, like when the police are driving behind, whether I've done something wrong or not, it's almost like I start remembering everything I did from way, way back and wondering whether or not they can criminalise it, whether or not they can pull it up, whether or not this, whether or not that. You know, sometimes you think, oh, did I pay that parking ticket? You know what I mean? Or sometimes, you know, when we had the tax sticker on the car, that would remind us when tax is due. And then, you know, I always used to have my MOT linked with my tax so I knew that one would, the MOT would come first and the tax would come second and I'd be good to go. Now I don't have the tax reminder, thank God DVLA have got this reminder service, but before they had the reminder service, it was left to my own devices. And I remember once I forgot to um, do my MOT for a couple of months. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, when you're driving and you see a police officer, it's like things like that come into your mind. Did I MOT my car? Is my is my um, car taxed? Um, did it, you know when I was doing all those um, insurance, looking for insurance on those compare sites, and I chose that one, and then I decided to choose another one. Did I actually activate it? Is it active? And it's like all of those things come into your mind just because, well, into my mind just because a police car is either pulling beside me or is behind me. I mean. You know, thank God, you know, most of the time now I've got direct debit for my, you know, for my tax and stuff like that. And there's reminders in place. So there's no real excuse for those kind of things. But I'm just saying, you know, what it does when you're when you're when you're approached by a police officer. And, you know, to be honest, I work with the police in certain areas. But, you know, it's and there are so I know that there are good cops but there are also bad cops. And every day I just pray that either my old man doesn't get stopped by a bad cop or I don't get followed by a bad cop. I remember once I didn't have my um, seatbelt on. I was actually, I was on the phone at first. I was leaving work. I was on the phone and um, I thought, OK, um, let me stop the car and talk to the person who had called me. So after a few minutes, I put the phone down and I drove off didn't pop my seatbelt on and I didn't have one of those cars that beep, 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 beep every time you haven't got your seatbelt on. So I'm driving along. Next thing I know, these cops are behind me. And I'm like, why are they behind me? Why are they following me? And then the next minute, you know, they do that thing, pull over, pull over, pull over. I'm thinking, oh, bloody hell. But the thing is, there'd been a murder in that area where I was working. So I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe they're just doing this checkout thing. Anyway, they come over to me. They said, oh, we noticed that you haven't got your seatbelt on. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it cuts, you know, it's cuts across my neck when I put it on. So I don't put it on. I didn't realise it was illegal at that time. This is quite a while ago. Um, not to have your seatbelt on. Oh, well, that's going to cost you 60 quid. Don't you know you can adjust it? <laughs> I've been, I've had that car for about 10 years and I didn't know you could adjust that um that slot thing so that the um, seatbelt would go a bit lower. But my, but my point is, is that, you know, they weren't very friendly. Um, thank God, you know, they didn't do no search or anything. But, you know, it all depends on the experience. You know, I was in I was in London once and, you know, about three police cars, they came and they all came around me. And I'm like, what have I done? There was me and my mate in the car. It was about three o'clock in the morning. We were coming from a rave. And they're saying, you, you've come out, you haven't got your lights on. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, have you been drinking? They took me out. They was just about to do a breath of light. I hadn't been drinking, thank God. But they were just about to do a breath of light test. <laughs> Next thing you know, they got some call. Some God is good, you know. <laughs> they got some call 
and they had to go to something a bit more exciting. So they drove off and left me there. They said, oh, just make sure you put your lights on. But they were ready. They were ready, man. But my point is, is that, yeah, it, to me, you know, I got a lucky break in that one. I don't know what would have happened. I, I really don't know. But they didn't look like they was in a good mood. I mean, three police officers surrounding my little Dege Dege car at the time. You know, I don't know what they expected. But yeah, it's um, it's not a good feeling. Make sure I haven't missed anything else. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it really. I just really wanted to, um, you know, know if that, you know, if my experience is what your experience might be with regard to racism. I mean, I know some people have some really direct um forms of racism you know have been directly affected by racism but you know it's the subtlety of racism sometimes it doesn't have to be this full-on somebody saying you effing nigger or you this or you that I hate all blacks and the clue that it sometimes it's not about that with regard to racism it's a way people's behaviors make you feel and something you feel you can't it's not something you can justify or explain a lot of the time i mean i've tried to explain it but somebody might just say oh that's a load of cobblers why would you be why would you have all those thoughts if you've got nothing to hide it's got nothing to do with that there's something about there's good people and there's bad people there's good cops and there's bad cops and if you get stopped as a black person by a bad cop you're not going to have a good day and that's all I'm trying to say. And to me, that is what racism feels like. And that's all for now. Bye bye.